a real refreshment and blessing to hear of the life of the Spirit in Christ Jesus. Amen. Being led by the Holy Spirit. As Brother Paul shared, we um, sent a hotline last night. How many got the hotline? Desiring this morning to share together in looking at the Scriptures on this subject of worship. You have your Bible with you today? Amen. The Word of God. I um, was encouraged as I was seeking the Lord about what to share today. My heart was encouraged as I remembered our time together Saturday morning and the the desire that was expressed of worship, that we as a congregation would grow in our worship. We would have a deeper understanding of worship and what worship is. Maybe to uh, just give a little direction here at the outset, I would like to sort of put a bit of a outline or framework on the board here and um, like us for us to be able to use the mics because when you interactively share together, it's, it's, it's a blessing to hear from you uh, what you have to share and that all can hear and that can be a part of the, uh, of the message. So I'll go ahead and begin to write a few things up here and then I welcome you also to give your input as well in case I uh, miss something that you feel should be up here, uh, help me out. Worship. What is worship? So we'll look at some definitions of worship. We could look at true worship, False worship. So there's true and there is false. I'm going to run out of space on this board. I told Ken Shark, I thought this thing was really big. False, F-A-L-S-E. We might put underneath false uh, vain. We can look at... um, Forms of worship. Form, F-O-R-M. Is that right? Forms. Forms of worship. Uh, We can look at rewards of worship. Should I put anything else up there? Am I missing something very key? I'm sorry? Blessed? Blessed? Blessings of worship. Ah, oh, yes, that goes under the rewards. Would that be right? Yes, okay, blessings. Thank you, brother. Blessings. All right, I have quite a few more written down here. I think maybe that's where we'll stop as the board is going to get full. Let's stand again for prayer. Father in heaven, we stand before you in reverence in adoration and Father to give you worship. Oh God, I pray that you would bless this topic of discussion, this Bible study, that it may be edifying. It may be enriching and encouraging to our hearts and lives. Oh God. Father, give us something to take home with us and 
be inspired in and put to practice and that it be a blessing in our lives. Father, please shepherd our hearts as we share together that all may be to the furthering and advancing of Your kingdom in our lives and in the lives of those we love and in this world. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. What is worship? And I encourage you again to raise your hand and the ushers will get a microphone to you. We have uh, two microphones and so if we can just keep our hands raised and uh, open up to share. There's a hand right over here on the brother's side. And if you have a definition of what is worship. Okay, Daniel. Um, I, what I'd like to share actually goes a little bit more with your categories there because I thought of the scripture where um, Jesus was sharing, I think it was at the place, he shared with a woman at the well. She, now, she was a Samaritan woman and Jesus told her that they that worship me worship in spirit and in truth. But her question ha- had to do with where we worship. Should we worship at this mountain? Do we have to go to Jerusalem? He's like, well, that's all just forms of worship. That's just where. That's not the real issue here. The real issue is truth and spirit. Because real worship comes from the heart. So that's maybe a a definition. Real worship comes from the heart, from the spirit. Uh, So instead of saying forms of worship, we might talk about what can we do to get rid of distractions uh, do I kneel down? Do I stand up? Do I go to my closet? Do I go to church? What's a form of worship? Uh, not so much a form of worship, but how do I get rid of distractions from worship? So I just wanted to bring that um, scripture where it says truth and spirit. Heart, truth. Spirit. Others? Someone else have the mic? What is worship? Timothy. I think of this verse, um, the thought is more of the aspect that I looked at. Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel the statutes and judgments. So he prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord. And I believe it's the same principle. Um, our hearts must be ready to worship. So it's, it's a ready heart is part of that preparation. Okay, it's a, it's a heart that is, is uh, ready, prepared. Someone else. As I looked over the word worship, both in the Old and New Testament, it seemed to have the idea of bowing down. Uh, it seemed like that idea came through pretty often. Uh, it's at least a posture of the heart that, that we recognize who God is. The other thing that, I, that stood out to me is that often uh, sacrifice went together with worship, that um, sacrifices were mentioned. And... Um, so we tend to give gifts to what we feel like is valuable. And I think as- ascribing worth to something, value, um, those are things that, that we worship. Okay, a bowing of the heart. Yes, go ahead. Um, I think this might kind of tie in with what Brother John was saying there. In, when Abraham went um, to offer his son Isaac, This was what he said to the young men that were with him. He said, uh, in verse 5 of Genesis chapter 22, he said uh, to his young men, he said, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I don't think they had a song service there, but they were going to go worship. Yes. And so I think there's some something deep right there. Um, Worship. You know, he was he was about to give up something very precious. Yes. And only because he saw God as bigger yet. And 
worth more. So, so worship is obedience, is that right? And surrender? Yes, go ahead, someone else. Yeah, worship to me is giving glory to God. A prime example would be when we come into the house of the Lord, we come to worship Him. It's not about me. It's not about how I feel. It's not about how the choir sounds when it sings or whether or not I approve of the message that the man of God has brought forth to the congregation. It's about God getting the glory out of what was done for Him. So worship is about glory to God. It's not about Michael. It's about God and how God feels about what was given to Him. Amen. Amen, brother. Giving glory to God. Here is an interesting quote. God has placed in the human nature of the man, the heart of man, the need and desire to worship. Brother Daniel Hofer. You can go to the most remote area of the earth and you will discover you don't have to teach people to worship. They're already worshiping some God. Is that true? You can go to the most darkest, unreached, uncivilized tribes in the world and you will find they are already acknowledging a higher supreme being. They're somehow seeking to worship. Is that true? That's, that's what I have been told. I have not been to all those places. But I believe it's probably a true statement, right? And we are worshipers. And you will find those people in many cases doing what we talked about here. They're bowing down. They're making sacrifice. Is that right? Sometimes out of their ignorance and their their darkness and blindness of heart, they will even sacrifice some of, some of their own people. There will even be human sacrifice. Somehow to appease the gods and to worship. Um, worship. Hmm. What is worship? The New Testament or the Old Testament is definition meaning is of bowing down and of, of bending and kneeling, prostrating yourself before the one you are worshipping. New Testament adds a beautiful picture as well, a bit of, a, of another picture, word picture, is that of kissing the hand of the one you're worshipping. And this is something that we do from our heart. It's an attitude of bowing and kneeling. What is worship? Is there someone else that has something to share yet here? Just feel free. Raise your hand in the back. Yes. Uh, the question is, can't you worship in two different spirits? Can you worship in the Holy Spirit and can you worship Satan? Just a question. Can you worship in the Holy Spirit or can you worship Satan? Somebody have an answer for that. Let's be biblical. Let's have Bible for what we're saying. Yes, Daniel. I thought of the verse, can out of the same, uh, can out of the same fountain come both sweet water and bitter? And the implication is no. All right. I think there was a hand up front here. Yes. Anyone else? Get yes. your hand up. Yes, Christ. Um, and that was a good question that the brother posed. But if you look at Matthew, I believe it's 4, chapter 4, where it's spoken of Christ. And after he had fasted, he was led up 
by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And Satan asked him to bow down and worship him. Christ spoke, and I'm going to quote the scripture. It's coming out of Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. And it says, Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Jesus was our example of who we are to worship. If Jesus would have submitted to the devil at this point in his life, then that in itself would have been a form of devil worship. We're not called to worship the devil. We're called to worship the Lord God and him only. Amen. Do we serve. Amen. Amen. So if the devil came to Jesus to try to get him to worship Satan, do you think he might come to mankind today as well and try to get men to worship Satan, he is the God of this world. He is the one who is instigating all manner of evil and wickedness. All kinds of uh, demonic books and like our brother Emmanuel warned us the other Sunday, Pokemon, you know, all this stuff, all this satanic stuff, Harry Potter, all these things that are going on of trying to draw people to worship Satan. He still the same as when He said, I will ascend up unto the Most High. I will be like God. I will. Because He was desiring to overthrow God and to receive worship. There's a hand up front here. Brothers, get your hands up that we can be edified together. We can be instructed in the Word. Yes, Amen. Brother Dwight. Well, the spirit of Satan is a spirit of self and pride. And all those who live for themselves are, in effect, worshiping him. We had that in our Sunday school lesson this morning. We should no longer live for ourselves. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Worship. Hand up front here. Brother Mel, the mic is coming. Just hold on. Yes. I think of a scripture or two that brings out what uh, I think there's one in the New Testament says, whatsoever you do to do it heartily as unto the Lord. And uh, I believe our everyday lives can be worshipped just simply as we as we endeavor to do everything for the glory of God mm-hmm. and not for ourselves. And, mm-hmm. and uh, Amen. So if I heard you correctly, our lives are, are what we do throughout the day even what might seem as a menial activity or something that needs to be done, can be worship. Is that right? Ah, I like that. So worship isn't just when I get in my closet and shut the door and talk to God. There's a hand right beside you, Jonathan. But worship can be an attitude of life, right? A a flow of life of God out of our lives. Yes. Yes. I think if we stop <clears throat> this on I think if we stop and look at the beautiful flowers and acknowledge who made them and why they're there that can be a form of worship. Yes. 
The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Yes. In something that helps me to think of what worship is, is the old uh, English definition from Webster's Old Dictionary. Uh, can't quote it word for word, but I believe it says something about giving worth to. That worship is giving worth to. Yes. Yes, in the back. Yes. I think we can also worship. One form is praise, as in Psalm 100 talks about it. Uh, Verse 4, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't write all those up. Someone else has something. All right. What causes us to worship? What makes men worshipers? You see, we become worshipers when we give worth to that deity or that being and we are taken up. Our, our, our thoughts, our, our life is taken up in admiration. Right? And what causes people to worship out of every kindred and nation where they once danced around candles and fires and worship the host of heaven and whatever they worship, when they have the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they become saved, they become worshipers of God. Amen? Then they become worshipers of God. There's someone else has a microphone in the back. Yes, Justin. <clears throat> One of the definitions also <clears throat> sorry, <wait. clears throat> is to love exceedingly or too much. Mm. Um, also, along with that, it, in most of the accounts where it talks about someone worshiping, um, there's, a def- there's a difference between bowing down and worshiping. He bows down first and then he worships. Mm. Or um, like the there were the uh, what we call the wise men went to find Jesus. They went to worship him. And we often connect. We often try to connect the bowing down as worship or singing as worship. Um, I think that there's a there's a difference there. The worship would be exalting or lifting up that person that is being loved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You touched a little bit on on two things there, the the, uh, side of perhaps a vain worship also. So we'll look at that a little bit as well. Someone else has a microphone. Yes. I think that the deeper or the more we realize who God is, the greater the worship that flows forth. Yes. Uh, Isaiah... God used him, had used him for the first five chapters to deliver his message. And then it says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his chain filled the temple. Mm -hmm. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings with twain. He covered his face with twain. He covered his feet and with twain. He did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Hallelujah. It goes on, says some other things that were happening there. But Isaiah's response, then said I, woe is me. Yes. He confessed more of his sin. He confessed who he was, but it was because he saw who God was. He didn't hide himself. He didn't deny it, but he just confessed. He said, this is who I am. This is who you are, God. He worshiped. Amen. Our view of God greatly affects our worship, doesn't it? If we have a low view of God, our worship will not be what it ought to be. It'll, it'll be low. 
But if we have a lofty high view of God, when I see God, then my worship is lofty. Because God is lofty and mighty and glorious. And we read it in Revelation, if I can come in on that, where they were falling down before the Lord, crying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Yes, brother Daniel. I was trying to imagination, imagine uh, worship without three things. Um, I don't think uh, true worship can happen in the absence of these um, servanthood is one, like where we call him Lord. Um, the same, I don't know if it applies, but I know that Sarah called Abraham Lord. Um, but I think it's in a little bit of a different way. Um, the second one that I think of is indebtedness. Um, like what you'd have between a, a servant and, or a worker and his boss in the lowest sense. But it just maybe these are true in the extreme when it comes to worship. The third one uh, is expectation of receiving something. Um, so all these three could be taken in, uh, to the extreme and they would be very true for a true heart of worship, I think. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Worship. Under the Old Covenant, when they came to worship, they brought a sacrifice, right? You had to bring a sacrifice. So they brought a dove, or they brought some pigeons, or they brought a lamb. They brought a sacrifice. Today, in New Covenant, New Testament worship, we come to worship and we bring a sacrifice. Anybody want to tell me what the sacrifice is today? Praise, a sacrifice of praise we bring. Yes, that's good. Thank you. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Those are attitudes of worship. But what is the sacrifice, Brother Dwight? Present your body the living sacrifice and the word there is worship, it's true worship. Yes. Oh, I wish we could have had you... Say that for us in the, in the microphone. We'll get a microphone to you. I want them to hear it in your own voice. I could repeat it, but this is a Bible study. Brother Dwight, please share that again. Uh, Romans 12, 1. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. And that word service is the word for worship. It refers, it's probably a reference back to the temple service. We bring a sacrifice. Amen. The lambs were dead sacrifices. They had no part in it. They were involuntary. They offered. Under the new covenant, the worshiper becomes the worship offering. And our offering is ourselves a living sacrifice. We are the ones who make the sacrifice. We also are the sacrifice. What God is looking for is for us to place our lives, our bodies, our entire being, everything that we are, on the altar of God. Worship involves surrender. Yes, a hand in the back. Go ahead. Yes. Under your category of rewards, um, it isn't that we get a reward. But it's that Christ gets a reward. Mm. Mm. And that we are the reward that he has purchased with his blood. Amen. And a verse that we might consider what we can do is Romans 5.21 that has sin has reigned unto death. Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And the way that he might receive his reward is by us receiving his grace, which reigns in our righteousness. Thank you, brother. Amen. Rewards 
our offering of ourselves unto God in total surrender obedience to Christ is Christ's reward. Did I hear that correctly? We are His reward. He's receiving the reward of His suffering. Yes? Thank you, brother. Worship. I see that time is moving fast. You know, Isaiah was mentioned, and he saw the Lord upon his throne. Are there competing thrones in my life for my worship? What are some hindrances to worship? Let's be edified together here in this exercise. We looked at worship. We looked at some biblical examples. Abraham, he said, I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Are there hindrances to worship, to true spiritual worship? What are some of those hindrances? Idols. Idols. Yes. Daniel. I guess some of the hindrances for me sometimes are, I want to do this. I want to do that. I would like to mm. you fill in the blank. What, whatever it is that I want to do uh, just takes away my time for worship. Mm-hmm. Idols, I, the big I, my way. Man-centered, right? Self, man-centered, often, that gets in the way. Other thoughts? Get your hands up. All right. Is there someone else over there? Yes? Worship. This subject is very large. We're just going to scratch the surface. But I really desire that we could take something home today that will bless our lives into true spiritual worship. Yes. Uh, The the voice of Satan appeals to uh, lure instincts and he suggests, I want. The voice of God appeals to the higher instincts and suggests, I ought. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you. Yes, Lucas. You were talking about uh, idols there, and I just had to think a little bit. Something that's taking my time means I'm giving worth to it. And uh, so in a sense, I'm worshiping that thing. I'm creating an idol by, by giving worth to it. It's taking my time away from what I should be worshiping. Mm-hmm. So what, what are the things that rob us of our time? What are those idols? Vain worship was touched on just briefly, but vain worship basically at the core is any form of worship when it's superficial and the heart is not engaged. Is that a correct statement? And see, I used to think vain worship is only found in very religious settings a very staunch, strict religion. But you know, God says in Isaiah chapter 1 that even when you're bringing uh, your, your, your feasts and your sacrifices and you're going through all that which God ordained them to do, but He said, I have a problem with it. What was the problem? What was wrong? The heart wasn't in it. He said, your your exercise of worship, it's just superficial. And so, no matter how high I can jump and how loud I can leap and clap my hands, it can still be vain worship, right? Or no matter how quiet I can be and how sober and how straight I can sit and have this appearance of very humble, godly attitude, it can still be vain, right? Because what worship really is, is above all, that we are enraptured lovers of God. We have encountered God. And we are worshipers. You know, anyone who gets truly born again, truly saved and delivered from a life of sin, becomes a what? A worshiper. 
They can't stop talking about what Jesus has done for them. And they are enraptured lovers of God. Paul said, some of you might accuse me of madness who don't know the love of God. And you might say we're beside ourselves. But he said, it's the love of Christ that constraineth us. The idea appears that Paul's love for Christ carried him beyond himself and such delights of love to others who don't know Jesus might seem irrational. They say, you're beside yourself. Well, that's how the apostles were, weren't they? They were worshippers in the presence of Jesus and in the presence of God. And people took knowledge. These men have been with Jesus. Oh, Lord, help us. Has my love faded? Has it grown dim? My lofty view of God, has it been lowered? And people make remarks today that are sacrilegious and that are blasphemous. God is almighty God. He's not the man upstairs. He is Lord of lords and King of kings. He's to be worshipped and adored. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and Him only shalt thou serve. You see, worship and service are connected, aren't they? What I worship, I serve. Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon. What am I taken up with? How I can make more money. How I can succeed in this business. And like our brother Justin Kanegi shared so well this morning, am I so busy, caught up, that I don't have time to come aside and to wait upon the Lord and to worship? Well, perhaps the most serious charge that can be brought against Christians today is that we are not sufficiently in love with Christ. So we try to prop up all other forms of worship. I don't recommend that to you. Don't, don't just try to put it on. You can have reality. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. There's blessings, brother. There's the blessings of the Lord upon the soul that waits upon God. But I want to encourage you today, don't wait for the feeling. Don't wait for God to do it. Begin to meditate upon God and His awesome, terrible, mighty acts and precepts and the awesome majesty of God and who He is. And begin to give thanks What are some hindrances to worship? A murmuring, complaining spirit. Oh, poor me, like the Israelites. You know, and we forget and we don't see what God has done and what He is doing. A brother shared this morning in our Sunday school class. He said, you know, it's my perspective so much. Whether I get up and I'm able to thank God that I'm alive, I can get up out of my bed, I can see the beautiful landscape, And I can give thanks to God. Oh, what are some attitudes that come out of a worshiping heart? Real quick. Let's just do a real quick one yet, then we'll close. It's time to close, I see. Gratitude. An attitude of gratitude. Everything I have, everything I am, I have received from God. It's not because I worked so hard, was so smart. and No, it's not that. It's because God gave it as a gift. Gratitude. Someone else, just call them out. We won't take the mics. Anything else? Rejoicing. Yes. Rejoicing. Appreciation Appreciation for the beauty of nature. Amen. Others. Contentment. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. He meets my needs. (laughs) Seeing the good in others. Being blessed with what I see, Christ in my brothers and sisters. Amen. Yes. And awe of God. Somebody told me the other day, food is good. People are beautiful. But only God is awesome. 
Amen? You see, we redefine the word, remember? We redefine the definition. And so now, pizza is awesome. No, no, no. It may be good. In fact, food is good. And my brothers and sisters in Christ are beautiful. I love to see the, the, the gifts and the talents and the qualities of character that God has given them. And they're different from me. And I can appreciate that. I'm so glad my wife isn't just like me. Aren't you glad, brother? God gave your wife some other gifts and abilities and talents and character. And when we see those things as a blessing, hallelujah! Oh my, I could share on and on. This is such a wonderful subject. Worship. A heart that worships. Well, I said I'll close. Thank you so much. And I want to encourage you. The Lord is seeking worshipers. When Jesus healed that, was it that Pharaoh Cilician woman's son? How was that? She, he told her, you know, it's not good to give the, the, the meat that belongs to the, to the people, to the, to the dogs. But you know, she believed Christ and she just kept tenaciously holding on and she worshipped Him. Oh, praise God. God bless you, brothers and sisters. There's so much more that we could have wrote on the board but I thank you all for sharing. That is a real blessing to all of us and, and a treasure that we should treasure as we share together and we look at the Bible. And I agree with uh, that discussion Saturday morning. I desire that I can grow in my worship and that we as a congregation can grow in our worship. And see, it. It's an attitude of the heart. It's a posture of the heart. And so if we come to church, worshipers, we're going to have a lovely corporate worship service. Amen? Because what we are is what we are. So am I a worshiper at home on Monday? Am I a worshiper at home on Tuesday? And am I a worshiper on the job? Am I a worshiper, Brother Mel, in my work, doing everything heartily as unto the Lord? Oh, let us be of those that are extravagant lovers and worshipers of God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's an exciting topic, isn't it? Because it's, it's about God and who we worship. Praise God. That, that energizes me. Amen. Are we going to be worshipers this week? I wondered if we could, um, well, first of all, we, we've already had a lot of interaction here, so I don't want to take a lot of time for that. But maybe there's one other person, maybe you didn't speak today, who has a testimony that might be a blessing. There's one in the back. Go ahead, Elmer. Being here this morning, really a blessing. I just, I'm, I have a question. Why? Why am I so blessed? And then I met, I met a widow lady yesterday. <clears throat> Her husband died suddenly. She's an older lady. And she's so sad. So Her heart is so broken. And it, it just breaks my heart to see her so sad. I thought maybe we should pray for her this morning. That God would heal her. I mean, it's been like ten years. Her husband died suddenly. But it's... Let's help her. Let's pray for her. Can we do that? Sure. Her name is Edna Peachy. Okay. We'll do that. Um, the, the song that came to me is one we already sang. To me, it encapsulates the this, this spirit of worship really well. Is when I survey the wondrous cross. And uh, then it ends with that, that verse. You know, if, if I had everything, if I owned the whole world. The whole realm of nature, that would be too small. 
but I give myself, my life, my all. Could we just sing that, Joe? Could you lead us in that one? Uh, we'll sing it together and then um, we'll have some announcements and then we pray for Ed, Edna. When I survey the wondrous cross, when I survey the It's a beautiful prayer. Thank you for listening. We hope this message has blessed you. If you would like additional messages, please visit our website at ccfsermons.org. Call us at 855-55-CHARITY or write to us at Charity Christian Fellowship, 59 South Groffdale Road, Leola, PA. 17540. This ministry is supported by your donations. May Jesus Christ be Lord of all.